Hey guys, this is John, Hometown Auto Repair. I have a 2015 Buick Verano here, and the customer brought it to me and said that they think it has a bad wheel bearing. Well, I raised the car up, listened to every wheel bearing with a stethoscope and a screwdriver. I didn't hear anything, but when I drove the car, I did hear a roar, and so make sure this video is good to make sure that if you hear a roar in sound it may not be the wheel bearing this is a good thing to check so what i found is this right here is the intermediate shaft right there and it goes to the front it drives the front wheels the intermediate shaft is basically just the longer shaft from the uh, transaxle diff assembly. So anyway, I heard that roaring sound right here. And if you look, you can shake this. This bearing right here is bad. I can move that up and down. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. But anyway, that's the source of the roaring. So if you have this problem, watch this video and it'll show you, I'll show you exactly how to do it step by step. It's not a big deal, but if you do all the steps in order, it'll make it easy on you. I use ShopKey Pro Demand. I always do things in step by step. They have it laid out to where it makes it easy so you're not overworking yourself. So here we go. Got a new air hammer because of a Subaru wheel bearing. And if any of y'all ever done Subaru wheel bearings, you're gonna want this air hammer. The part number is actually have the box right here so there's the part number in the box this is a very powerful tool a bit pricey but you really need it for some big jobs i don't really need it for this but i just want to play with it i just want to use it anytime i can break out a air hammer that's a good day This is the new part going in, AC Delco um, intermediate shaft. This is the part that went bad, the bearing on the old one. All right, here's the label in case you need to get it. Right here, the camera is upside down pointing at the intermediate shaft under the car and 
I'm pointing at a little hole where you jam a drift pin through to separate the intermediate shaft from the housing. So you kind of got to stick this chisel up in it, kind of pry it out or beat it in and it pries it out. Bam. Whoa. Okay, here's the old intermediate shaft. As you can see, look at that bearing. And here's the new one. No slop at all. Just tight as can be. If I had two hands, I can spin it, but it does spin. This one's shot. All right. You will have fluid draining out, so it's best to hurry up and get your axle back in there as soon as possible. And however much drains out, put that amount back in. I'm just gonna put fresh back in. I got some extra to shop. It ain't gonna be much, maybe a half a quart at the very most. Now you have to be really careful. Let me get a light on this. I hope you guys can see this. This is something you gotta watch out for. If you see this, this seal right here, don't hit it with this shaft when you put it in. You got to really line it up. I'm gonna put the camera down because I only have one hand. I wanna do this with two hands, but they actually suggest a special tool to line this up so you don't knock this out. Now, this one's not as hard, but I have knocked axles out of Jeeps or axle seals out of Jeeps because they're way back in there and they're really hard to line up. So just, if you're doing this job, watch that. Right here, I'm hitting the intermediate shaft back into its bracket um, it's kind of hard to see from this point but you have to make it flush before you put the bolts in and you also have to line it up those bolts they're a little tricky to line up so Make sure you take your time and, and start it out with a wrench um, before you use an impact because I had a little bit of trouble trying to get that started. I probably edited it out, but just a little FYI. Say hi to the YouTube people. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> this guy's famous. The best detailer in the world. Ain't that right, Eddie? That's it. <laughs> Come see me. It's a real critical pinch bolt. It wants me to torque it to 22 foot pounds and then turn it at an additional 75 degrees. <laughs> Thank you. 
put an eight millimeter right here if this spins and to hold the shank and then an 18 millimeter nut. Some cars don't even have it. Right? You have to push up on this real hard to get it to stick. But GM, pretty easy to work on. axles in I'll test drive it make sure everything's all right make sure there's no leaks uh, put a little bit of transmission fluid in it but I didn't want to make a real long video so hopefully this helps you out and why don't you uh, hit the like button if you liked it and uh, check back next week for some more videos and I gotta answer the phone later